part 5 of our series of videos focusing on the language of logic, Boolean logic, and um, truth tables. Now previously we looked at logic gates in series and in parallel. Now we need to look at logic gates in parallel, uh, how they translate into truth tables. Now, one of the things that you need to know is how to calculate the number of rows required in a truth table. And that works with a formula. And the formula is 2n, uh, 2n where n equals the number of inputs. So for example, if I have three inputs, such as the example in front of us, a, b, and c, then n becomes 3. So that's 2, 3, or 2 to the power of 3, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 8. So that tells us that we need 8 rows in our table. Likewise, if I have four inputs, then that would be 16 rows. Um, and that works without fail, so always remember that. So let's have a look at our truth table then. Well, we've got um, we've got a NOT gate and we've got an AND gate feeding into an AND gate. So, now, let's start off with turning all of our inputs on. So that's A on, B on, C on. Well, we know if a NOT gate has a value of 1 going into it, or on or high, then its output will be 0. If both B and C have inputs equal to 1, then the output will be 1. So what we're looking at is an input of 0 and an input of 1 to our second AND gate. Now because it's an AND gate, the value has to be 0 or false. OK, so now let's look at turning A on, B on, but C off. OK. So, well, we know what the value is there. It's exactly the same for the, the flip on the, the NOT gate. And if B or C are off, then we know that the value is 0. So the output from A is 0, the output from B and C is 0, so the output at Q is 0. OK, so let's try... having our A as on, our B as off, or zero, and our C as on. Well, we know that that is zero. The not A is zero. And the B and C, of course, is zero as well, because it's just the, the reverse of what's happened in the previous row. So our output will be off, or it will be zero. OK, so now let's turn A still to one b to 0 and c to 0. Well, we know if a is 1, then its output will be 0. And we know if b and c are 0, then the output from that will be 0. So our ultimate output will be 0 on that one. OK. So let's start turning our inputs to a as off or as 0. So if it's off, then its, it's output is 1. OK, and we turn both of our inputs on to B and C, so we know that the output there will be 1. But, so we've got there, we've got a, a 1 as an input from, as an output from A rather, and we've got 1 as an output from B and C, so that means we've got two positive inputs into our second AND gate, so that gives us an output of 1. There we go. Now, let's turn our a input off, and again we just flip it, there we go. Uh, we turn B to true or on, but we turn C to off, so we know if they're uneven the output will be zero. Well we've got a, a one and a zero is feeding into our output Q, so that will give us zero because that will be off. Okay, so we turn A off, B off but C on on this occasion. Okay, because it's flipped, that's quite straightforward, that's easy. Now that's the input here in our seventh row, or the output rather in our seventh row. It's exactly the same as above, so that's zero. So we have an output of zero and we turn all of our inputs off. Well, if our input's off on A, then it's on as an output, but it's zero 
at B and C, so we've got an input of 1 and an input of 0 to our AND gate, so that turns it off. So there we are. So you can see where it could get complicated when you're working with three logic gates, two of them in parallel, feeding into a final logic gate. Always a good idea to start with an AND gate and a NOT gate to ensure that you understand how the truth table works on that. Let's move on to our next set of logic gates. Now, we now have um, four inputs, because we've got an OR gate and an AND gate. So if you remember the formula, 2N, N in this case being 4, 2 to the power of 4, gives us 16 rows, or 16, um, 16 variations on inputs. Get a little bit complicated when you get up to 16, but let's give it a go. Well, let's first turn all of our inputs on. There we go. Now, if A or B are on, then that gives us an output of 1. If C and D are on, that gives us an output of 1. So that's two positive inputs going into our final AND gate. So that gives us a final output of 1, of course. Now, let's turn that input on, that input on, that input off, on rather, and that input off. Well, 1 or 1 into A or B gives us 1. Ah, but C and D, they're not 1. That gives us 1. We're now feeding... Let's get that right. It gives us 0, rather. So we're now feeding 1 and 0 into our AND gate, so that gives us 0. OK, so A and B on, C off, but D on on this occasion, so we're just flipping it now, of course. A or B on, well, gives us that. C and D, well, 1 is off, so that gives us that. So that gives us a final output of 0 there. OK, so A or B. Let's turn both of the inputs to C and D off. Well, A and B are on, so that gives us 1. C and D are off, so that definitely gives us a 0 as an output. Again, so we're 1 and 0 as inputs in that final AND gate, so that's a 0. There we go. Let's now start to work with um, different inputs here. So A on, B off. So, whoops, C on, D on, well, let's have a look, so 1, A or B on, well, that still gives us 1, C and D are on, so that gives us 1, so our final output of 1 on that one, there we go, now we want, so, that one, and that one, so that's 1 and 0, and then we want 1 and 0 for uh, C and D. So let's have a look. Well, 1 and 0, yep, so that's 1. 1 and 0, of course, is 0. Gives us an output of 0 altogether. So now we need to think carefully about where we are. Right, so we've got, well, input on, input off, input off, input on. Okay, well, 1 0, so that's A or B, well that's still 1, but 0 and 1 for C and D, well that would be an output of 0, so the input to the final AND gate, AND gate would be 0, there we go. OK, so A on, but B off, and C off and D off, there we go. Well, let's have a look at that, well 1 or OK, 1 or 0, because that's 1, 0 and 0 gives us 0, so that will give us 0 as the output of course, there we go. OK, so let's move ourselves along here. Well, now let's start to work with the negative inputs to A. Well, that's 0 and 1. And turn that input on and turn that input on. Well, A or B, it's just, you know, A off and B on is the same as B on and A off, and so on. So that gives us 1. C and D are both on, so that gives us 1. So we've got two positive inputs into our final AND gate, so that gives us one. Alright, so we turn A off and B on. C on, but B, D rather, off. There we go, so let's work that out. Well, 0 and 1 is 1, of course. It's very easy with an OR gate. Our AND gate is uneven, so that's 0. So that gives us... 1 and 0 into our final AND gate, which gives us 0 again. There we go. And 
OK. Let's turn A off again. Put B on. C off. Put D on on this occasion. Well, 0 and 1, we know is 1. 0 and 1 for an AND gate, we know is 0. There we go. So we've got 1 and 0 into our AND gate. So that gives us 0 again. There we go. So now we're into A off, B on, but C off and D off. Well, we know 0 and 1 is 1. 0 and 0 into our end gate gives us 0, so we're off again. There we go. OK, now let's turn both of our inputs to our OR gate off. You see where we're going here. Both inputs to C and D on. So if both inputs to an OR gate are off, then of course that gives us off. Both in inputs to our AND gate are on, so that's 1. But we're feeding into an AND gate 0 and 1 this time, so it's still 0. There we go. So our next one, we'll look at both inputs to our OR gate off. But this time we have one input on, one input off in our AND gate. So that gives us... 0 for our OR gate, and 0 overall for our AND gate. So that gives us 0 overall. There we go, and we're into our final two rows. Well, we turn off A, we turn off B, we turn off C, but we turn on D. OK, so 0 and 0 into an AND gate. OR gate rather gives us 0. 0 and 1 into our AND gate gives us 0 again. So that gives us an uneven input, so that's off. And we turn all of the inputs off. Oh, try that again. There we go. All of the inputs off. Well, we know two negative inputs into an OR gate is zero. Two negative inputs into an AND gate is zero. And so, therefore, our output at Q is zero. Now, what I suggest you do is you look very carefully at how that um, that uh, truth table was created for the statement, because it gets a little bit complicated, of course. And to our next um, set of logic gates working in parallel and series. Well, we've got an XOR gate, A and B, A or A, X or A, X or B, exclusive OR, C or D feeding into our AND gates. So we start off with turning all of our inputs on, of course, as our standard practice. Well, if A X or B are both on, then that gives us an output of 0. C or D are on, well that gives us an output of 1. So that's 0 and 1 feeding into our AND gate, so that gives us an output of 0. Uh, A on, B on, C on, D off. Well, we know 1 and 1 is 0. 1 and 0 is 1, because it's an OR gate, but we're still feeding in 0 and 1 into our AND gate, so that's 0. Turn a on, turn B on, turn C off and D on. So let's have a look at that. Well, 1 and 1 is 0, we know that. 1 and 0 is 7, 0 and 1, so that gives us 1. But our output overall will be 0. OK. So both inputs on for our XOR gate. And both inputs off for our OR gate. So 1 and 1, well, we know that's 0. 0 and 0, well, we know that's 0, so there's two zeros feeding into our AND gate. That gives us 0 overall. So let's start to manipulate our inputs to our XOR gate now. All right, so we've got well, 1, A on, B off, C on, D on. Well, we know with an XOR gate, the row is exclusive OR, so 1, 0, so the output will be 1. C and D, well, if either of those are on, that gives us a 1, so we're feeding two 1s into our AND gate, which gives us 1. And there we go. And turn A on, B off, C on, and D off. Well, that gives us 1, and gives us 1, which gives us an overall output of 1, of course. Turn A on, and B off. Turn C off this time and D on. So 
1 and 0 we know is 1, 0 and 1 we know is 1. So again, two positive inputs going into our AND gate gives us an output of 1. OK, so A on, B off, C off, and D off. Well, 1 and 0 is 1, we know that. 0 and 0 into our gate gives us 0. 1 and 0 into our AND gate gives us 0 as our output. OK, so let's start to manipulate um, input A now. So, off, on, on, on. Well, off and on for an XOR gate gives us 1. On and on for an OR gate gives us 1. So that gives us 1 as our output. And there we go. Off, on, on, off. Well, we know where that's going. That's giving us 1 for there. 1 for there, so that gives us an output of 1 for there. Off, Ooh. on, off, on. Well, that gives us 1 for there and gives us 1 for there, so we know again the output is going to be 1 for there, so down to the final 5 rows. Off, on, both inputs, whoops, 2, C and D. Off, well that gives us 1, and 0. Well, that gives us an ultimate output, of course, of 0 at um, Q. OK, so we need to now turn both inputs to A and B off. And, yep, starting with those on. OK, well, off and off, we know, is off on an XOR gate. It's 1 on the uh, C or D, but it's 0 and 1 to our AND gate, so that's 0. OK, and again, off and off. On and off. <laughs> well, off and off we know is off. One and off is one or on. But final weight P in zero. There we go. So off, 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 on. Well, we know again that's zero. We know that's one. And we know the output of Q then is zero. And final step is to turn all of the inputs off, of course. If we turn all of the inputs off. That means that X or B is 0, C or D is 0, so Q therefore is 0. So that is our A, X or B and C or D gate. Let's look at our final set of logic gates in um, parallel and series. So we've got three XOR gates, A, X or B, C, X or D, feeding into an XOR gate to give us Q. Let's start off with our standard approach, which is to turn all of our inputs on. Well, with an XOR gate, if both inputs are the same, then the output is 0. So we've got two zeros feeding into Q, which gives us 0, of course. So A on, B on, C on, D off. Well, 1 and 1 we know is 0. 1 and 0 we know is 1. Well, 0 and 1 feeding into for Q gives us 1 as an output. OK, 1 and 1. 0 and 1, which is just reversing the, the uh, previous line. Well, that gives us 0, and 0 and 1 into D gives us 1, so that gives us an output of 1, of course. OK, so both inputs on for A and B. Both inputs off for C and D. Well, that's 0, and that's 0, so that gives us an output of Q of 0, of course. OK, so 1 and 0, 1 and 1. Let's have a little look at that. Well, that gives us 1 as our input or output, rather, for x or b. Our output for c, x or d gives us 0. 1 and 0, of course, is 1 for our outputs. OK. 1 and 0. OK. And 1 and 0. OK, well, 1 and 0 gives us 1. 1 and 0 gives us 1. That's two inputs the same into uh, for Q, so that gives us zero, of course. There we go. And one, and zero, and zero, and one, of course, gives us one, and one, which gives us zero as our output, so there we go. All right, so now A is on, B is off, C is off, D is off, well, we know that A, or X or B, it will give us 1. That will give us 0, so that will give us 1 and 0 feeding in, which gives us 1, of course, there. So, 
let's start to turn it around the other way now. So let's turn A off, B on, C on, D on. Well, 0 and 1 we know is 1, 1 and 1 is 0, that gives us 0 there. 1 and 0 feeding in gives us 1. OK, now false and true, or 0 and 1 rather. Hmm. And 1 and 0, so let's see what we got there. Well, that gives us 1, and gives us 1. Two ones feeding in can't happen, so that gives us an output of 0 on that one. 0 and 1. 0 and 1. OK, well that gives us 1 and 1, which of course gives us a 0 output. There we go. There's 0 and 1. 0 and 0, of course, turn them both off. Well, 0 and 1 we know gives us 1. 0 and 0 gives us 0. 1 and 0 feeding in gives us a positive outcome. There we go. Now let's turn both A and B off. And C and D on. Well, 0 and 0 gives us 0. 1 and 1 gives us 0. 0 and 0 feeding in, of course, gives us 0. There we go. Now, 0 and 0 for B, of course. Uh, for C, and D, we need to have 1 and 0. Well, 0 and 0 gives us 0. 1 and 0 gives us 1. Well, we know 0 and 1 feeding into exclusive OR gate gives us 1. So 0 and 0 and 0 and 1. So, well, we know that's 0. 0 and 1 gives us an output of 1. So 0 and 1 feeding in gives us a 1. And we turned all of the inputs off this time. There we go. Well, 0 and 0, we know it's 0. 0 and 0, 0. 0, 0 feeding into Q gives us 0. So, we have looked at four sets of logic gates and created the truth tables for them. Um, and the trick, of course, if there's a trick to this, one of the tricks is to make sure that you've got the correct number of input rows and that uses the formula 2n, with n being the number of inputs. Vital that you get that correct. Another rule of thumb, of course, is that if you have three inputs, then that's eight rows. If you have four inputs, then that's 16 rows. Yeah. Beyond that, it starts getting quite complicated indeed. And you have to remember where all of your um, inputs and outputs are, are going. But the best way, of course, to start with is to either be have all of your inputs on all of your inputs off. doesn't really matter either way around, as long as you're consistent, and then switch them off in series, making sure with four inputs, of course, that you get them correct. Thank you.